Okay, so let's go ahead and get started, guys. Um, I've got a small, like I said, presentation that's going to kind of walk us through, keep me on track of today, what today's purpose is. And then um, at any point, these things, these kind of seminars, these group talks work well when you ask questions. There's going to be a lot of questions that you will have in anything, right? Whether it's regarding the information we're going over or whether it's something you've heard or whatever. Secondly, we've got a lot of resources online, but we've also got a lot of resources within our club. Right? We've had some families that have gone through the process. We have a few that have spent a lot of time researching it. Um, so you're going to have a lot of resources to get in the information that you may need, you have questions on, ask. That's the big thing. Okay. So my name is uh, Tony. You guys know me as uh, the owner director of Power Volleyball with Chris. I also help with our recruiting in the club. Okay. So kind of the first thing I wanted to do is talk about, well, what does that mean as a recruiting director, coordinator? What do you do, right? So my responsibilities here at Power, and this could be different than other clubs that you've been at uh, or what you kind of thought the director's position would be. My, re my job here is to be a resource to you guys. Um, I am not <laughs> the one that does all the work to get your daughter recruited. So that's just, I want to make sure that we differentiate those two things. Recruiting, the evaluation process, all that is a lot of work. And I'm here to kind of help you guide and walk through that process. Whether it's just education, whether it's uh, holding your family accountable, whether it's helping with video, just all that kind of stuff. I'm here as a resource. Chris is here as a resource from that regard. All right, that's at the beginning. During the season, during the, when things really get going, that's when Chris, myself, your coaches will start working for you guys. You're gonna go through the process, you're gonna start saying that maybe you've not had success. We come in, we start reaching out to our contacts. We act as a liaison between the coaches and you guys. And through this process, you're gonna find there's a lot of rules that are NCAA governed where you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't receive calls, whatever. well that's where we come in. So that's, that's kind of our responsibility, our job for, for the club to work for you guys. It's not necessarily to get you, like Tony got me this scholarship. All right, or Chris is going to do this and I don't have to do anything. No, we're here more as resources for you. So Chris, you guys know Chris, he's going to be helping out as well. Um, he coaches our 16s program, I coach our 17s program, which is kind of big years for, uh, for recruiting. So as I said, um, communications are going to be a big thing. I'm going to help you guys with that. Uh, I've got a lot of resources that I use um, that I'm going to make available to you guys to kind of and hey, what does communication mean? Does it mean sending a mass email? Does it mean sending a personalized email? We're gonna go through all that stuff as well. All right. So the way that I wanted to open up this, today's kind of meeting is kind of walk you through the timeline of what to expect each year. Uh, since we've got some, some uh, athletes at different age groups, we've got mostly sophomores, right? And some juniors, okay? And then a senior, and then a senior as well. Okay, so I'm going to kind of quickly kind of go through that, what the expectations are each year. Um, so coaches, when, they, when you talk to a college coach, they're going to label you as a prospect or a PSA. You're going to see words like PSA. It basically just means prospective student athlete, right? That means that you are a prospect in their eyes. You're not a recruit. You're somebody that they're evaluating and assessing to, to determine if you're going to fit their mold or if you're going to help them keep their job, essentially, is what it, what it works out to be. As a freshman, and again, we don't, I don't think we have any freshmen here, but as a freshman, your job, yes, we do. Hey. <laughs> your job is grades and just to make sure that you're getting the best possible training. I mean, that's as much as athletics is as important to recruiting, so is academics. There's a lot of opportunities that you can get because of your test scores or your grade scores that you may not get um, through athletics. So it's super important for a freshman to really kind of focus on that. Uh, so the things that may be happening in your freshman year is you're probably going to start receiving some brochures. Um, probably the end of the club season, you'll get the camp offers, the, hey, visit this, visit that. Does not mean that you're being recruited. <laughs> it just means that they are interested in you potentially, or you made their list somehow, whether it's from a roster through one of the national qualifying tournaments, Maybe you send an email. It just means you're on their list, which is a good thing. You want to be on college coaches' list. That's where they pull their information. That's where they pull their recruiting. That's where they kind of do their, their work at national qualifiers. So for freshmen, 
that's really majority of what you're gonna be finding, right? Focus on the grades, continue to work on your skills. If you get those camp brochures, make sure you respond, filter out and see which one you wanna to go to. For your sophomore year, right? This is where you're gonna start seeing some of the kids start make varsity. This is where you see some of the division between talent level. You'll see some kids um, kind of dream of college ball just kind of goes wayside, right? So for the sophomores, the big year for them is starting to get uh, research, 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 right? What schools do I really want to go to? Um, you start identifying, I like this part of the country. I don't like this part of the country. So for us, what we really ask our sophomores and 16-year-olds to do is start researching schools, okay? Start researching schools, start setting expectations for your family. So as an example, if you're... <laughs> example here is you're a 5'4 middle blocker, you're probably not going to start reaching out to schools like Texas or Nebraska or some of your Division I schools. So this is where we set with our sophomores a lot of the expectations. Maddie is an example, right? Hey, you want to be a setter. I'll talk to you. I'll help you and say, well, based on your skill set, we probably should be looking here. However, let's open it up to everything and kind of see where we're at from there. Okay. Uh, the communications really pick up your sophomore year. This is where we're going to start sending out emails and start really trying to reach and trying to get on recruiting lists. So when we say recruiting lists, what we're talking about is these coaches work from their own databases, right? There's a lot of services out there that talk about, excuse me, uh, join our service, we'll market towards you, we'll help you out and all that. They pull from those sources, but majority of where a college coach is going to get their their workflow is from people that communicate with them. Okay, so as an example, Maddie, you reach out to XYZ school, say, I'm interested in your school, this is something, you know, here's my name, here's my number. They're going to put you on what we consider their recruiting list. That's where they pull their work from. Your job as a sophomore, junior player is to get on those lists, right? An email is not going to get you a scholarship offer, it's not going to get you recruited. You're basically trying to pique the college coach's interest in you. The ultimate result or goal is to get that college coach or recruiter to come to your court and come see you. That's, the, that's your job. That's the kid's job. That's your job, kind of preseason, midseason, throughout the years. Get those coaches interested in you and get them to the court. Yeah? Let me bring up one thing that happened to us. If you're following your sophomore year, as you know, you may not know, coaches do not until September 1st of their junior year, okay? So, I spent hours emailing coaches, hey, my daughter's on this tour, we're playing at this time. I got no way of knowing if they're showing up or not. I get Nebraska to show up. <laughs> I'm excited, except my daughter's playing DS and not Libera. That's where Tony can come in to help. Because they're gonna be your only communication link to a coach mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, they can talk to them. That's the most frustrating thing I went through in sophomore year. Because you're just blindly, basically marketing your child and kind of sort of getting some feedback. As you can see when they open your email, you can see this. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is they're there at the conference. You tell them what court you're on, but you got no way of knowing if they're going to show up. Yeah. And sure enough, they show up, and your daughter's not playing, or she's playing, you know, she's sitting on the bench, it's like, oh my god, I just missed this opportunity. Yeah. So that's what's going to be the risk of coming in. Yeah, so through, through, you're absolutely right, right? So there's going to be a lot of rules and regulations. So the big one being, coaches can't respond back to you. And that's kind of the one where it's like, oh, I'm doing all this work, writing all these emails, doing all this stuff, and nobody has responded, you know? What am I doing this for? Doubt starts to set in, uh, set in and you start kind of backing off. I kind of come in. And this is where when we start really diving into the process and start talking about workflow and what you guys need to do, one of the things that I always request you do, and I sat with you and talked about this, is when you start communicating with coaches, you need to copy me. You need to copy Chris. You need to make sure that your coach knows that you're reaching out. You need to let your coach know that you're even interested in playing college ball. Okay. Because as an example, Anna sends a, she's, let's, sophomore, you're sending emails, you're like, yeah, I'm doing my research, I'm doing everything I am, organized, family sends all this stuff out, and you don't hear nothing. You're like, what's going on? I'm at the tour, quali tour qualifier, I see coaches, but nobody's responded. I'm at MOK, I'm mid-season, and nothing's happening, right? 
Just because you're not getting responses doesn't mean that it, the process isn't working. Right? Again, your job is to get on these lists. Expectations. As a freshman, you better believe it. There are freshmen currently right now that are being recruited by Texas, Nebraska, Penn State. <laughs> Those are your 1%. And I'm talking like small, small, small percentage of kids that are actually legitimately have a chance to play di that high division one as a freshman, right? The majority of the volleyball population, which is a tremendous amount of kids, tremendous amount of kids. I, mean, I saw a study yesterday I was looking at, there's over 400,000 volleyball players in the United States. That's a lot of volleyball players, <coughs> right? Just high school, freshmen through seniors, a lot. Okay, overwhelming majority fall into this bucket where you're going to have to do some work. Your coach is not going to know your name. You're not making the ESPN top 10. Even the top one are not making that except the Decatur girl, you know? <laughs> and that's one every five years that something like that happen. So you're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to research. And our job is to try to break that and say, okay, coach doesn't know me. How do I get in front of him? How do I pique the interest of XYZ school in Utah or Texas school down the street? How do I get them to my court? And once they're in my court, then what? Right? That's part of the process that I'm going to help you guys with. So for a junior, it might be a little bit different than a sophomore. For you guys, uh, my sophomore and freshman included, you're, you're writing these emails, you see, let's just say Texas State shows up at the court, take a mental note. Say, awesome, Texas State showed up. Whether she's looking at Kaylin or not, she still showed up. She could be looking at the 6'4 monster on the other side. <laughs> so what? What you'll do is mentally take a note and say, Texas State showed up. I know I sent her an email or called her or whatever. Follow up. Follow up after the tournament and say, hey, Coach XYZ, thanks for showing up to our court. Uh, we did a really good job. I played this or we lost. However, I had fun. I, blah, 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 blah. You just want to stay in constant communication. But that's, that's how you do it. That's communication when we say that. It's just constant communication. At the end of the day, what recruiting is all about is building a relationship with coaches, right, with schools that you can eventually see yourself, your daughter, going to and staying for four years. So it's a, it's a relationship. It's like courting. It's a courting process between you and schools and coaches. So all these yeah. emails that you may be sending you probably? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, gets, it gets a lot, right, for me. <laughs> It gets a lot, but that's okay. So I have a system that I use to kind of, now if I see, you know, chain mail going out, I'm probably going to just make mental note of the schools that she's reaching and then probably delete everything. But I want to know that one, you're doing your job by emailing out. Two, potentially what are you saying, right? Because I mean, at the end of the day, I, I'm going to tell you guys, please do not send mass emails. They're, they stick out like red thumbs, you know, just, everybody knows their mass emails. You're just changing the coach's name and the school color, right? Take the time, research the school, send specific inf information. Now, for the first communication that you're going to be sending out, you don't need to put your life story. Okay? You're not trying to, believe it or not, you're not really trying to sell your daughter. It's more of, here's my information, all right? here's where I'm going to be playing. I played at Power, I'm at 16-1, 17-1. If you have video, that's the time to put it. Okay. You're introducing yourself. Hey, my name is XYZ. Here's my information. I jumped this high. Boom. We're going to be at Tour Texas MLK. I'd love to see you there. Boom. Those coaches most likely will not know 70, 80, 90% of those kids that send emails. The way you're going to pique their interest is through video. Extremely important. Extremely important. So if you have video, my suggestion is before you put it up, let me see it. Right? Video is going to be the kind of the first entry of the eye into your daughter. We want to make sure that it represents your daughter in the best light. So the best highlights. If you, if you have two minutes or 30 seconds to impress a coach, we want to put the best kind of shot of your daughter, whether it's diving for balls or perfect sets or great hits or blocks, whatever. You only have about a, most 30, 30 to 45 seconds to capture their audience. Right? So that's how you kind of communicate. So, hey, walk into the process. Uh, my name is this. Here's my video. Uh, we're going to be at Tour Texas. I'd love to see you guys. Send it out. You're keeping track of all those schools that you're, that you're reaching out to, and you're building kind of your own personal list or database of schools, right? From there, walking through the Tour of Texas, your job as parents is to support your kid, right? Not try to get, not get too uh, inundated with the recruiting. You're there to cheer your daughter on. Throughout the process, if you see a coach walk in, just take a mental note, keep a notebook with you and say, okay, Texas State showed up, awesome. 
whether they're here for my daughter or not, who cares, right? You're still going to reach out and thank them for coming to your court. Do they wear shirts? Absolutely. <laughs> they'll wear these, they'll wear their jackets. You'll see Okay. Now, <laughs> part of that, part of that is, uh, one, they don't necessarily want to talk to you, and two, they can't talk to you. All right, it's, it's twofold, <laughs> yeah. Last year, when we were down to some of the main, you know, the tour of Texas and mm -hmm. stuff like that, um, I kind of watched who was around the game, you know, the, the uh, court, and um, you, you can kind of tell the dads, <laughs> and you can tell, you know, somebody involved with the team usually, but there's always some people setting up video that don't, they're always hopping around. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of? I mean, I, I know you don't know. It, so, are you talking about like an actual service, yeah, or are you talking about? Maybe, yeah, yeah, they're recruiting services out there. They're so through the process, right? You're going to have a lot of people. And Todd, maybe you can help me speak on this. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to reach out saying, "I represent X Y Z N C S A." And um, I'd like to schedule a meeting with you guys to talk about the recruiting. You know, I saw your daughter, which is a lie. I saw your daughter. I think she'd be perfect for our recruiting service. And here's what we can do for you. We'll provide you a one-on-one uh, -on -one coach or assistant. And we're going to market your daughter to coaches. We're going to send your information, blast it out to everybody out in the country. All right? We're going to work for you. Give us $4,000. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, they didn't have any logos or anything. Yeah. All right. You're going to have those as well. And the question that's always asked to me is, should I do it or should I not? My response is, it's going to depend upon you. Is there benefit to that? Potentially. You, why would you not want somebody else working for you, right? At the end of the day, everything they're doing, you can do. <laughs> everything they're doing. There's nothing special about them. It's not uh, John Dunning or Russ Rose that just retired that decided to get into the video business and has all these contacts. All right, it's a, it's a. Tony, do, do the colleges call so, say, hey, uh, Todd, we know you're consultant for us. Can you go to this tournament and uh, video this player? So here's. Do they do, they do that? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. I, if that example and that type of example, you're talking about that kid that they're ready to make an offer to. Right. Otherwise, they're not going to spend the time recruiting. Right, right. If if it's truly that type of kid, they're sending their assistant coach, their recruiting coordinator, and the head coach to make that final decision right. because it's probably the, down to the top three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you'll see, you'll see coaches, right? Majority of them with their iPads and their iPhones, kind of walking like this the whole time. It's like this guy, you know, like shh. Right. Make mental note. One, they're not being rude. They cannot talk to you. Parents especially, they will not talk to you. Besides the minimum of. Uh, Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Blah blah. What school are you at? Cool, awesome. If you say, well, hey, you see number six over there, the one that just passed it, yeah, they're, they'll just ignore you. They have to. It's against the rule. They could lose their job. So that's the first thing, right? Coaches, they come across as very smug and like, ugh. They're just as stressed as you are because they know that they're under the scrutiny of laws and rules and all that as well. Okay. Um, but back to the NCSA. So you're going to have those organizations reach out and say, hey. Come be part of our service. Uh, you can speak more on it if you want. We've got some families in our club that have currently done that. But ultimately what they're doing is they're creating a database. It's, it's a database of information that you can put anywhere. And they're making it available to coaches saying, these are my prospects with an NCSA. Come look. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll blast out coaches saying, these are, and they use terms like um, game-changing recruit, you know, and blast it out to 10,000 schools. and. It's no different than what you're doing. Just to see what's there. Well, yeah, at the end of the day. So, um, could it fit your family? Sure. Are you a family that doesn't have any time at all or just says, you know what, I don't really want to be that involved with it and I've got somebody else that wants to do it? Sure. Or, you know what, I want everybody working for me to make this thing work? Fine. You know, there's, there's benefits for and, and against it. Uh, my suggestion is talk to Todd. He's going through it currently. Do you have any kind of... Yeah, I mean... She's on Captain U, she's on sports recruits, but the, the heavy majority is in CSA, which we switched mm -hmm. okay. Very good tool. They have different packages. They make it super easy to email. You just put in the college you're interested in. Boom. Up come all three of the coaches. 
type your stuff, you, you copy your huddle videos, whatever, it's really cool. Some of them help you go and do the, the uh, preferences. So they'll pull up a map and they'll tell them what stage you're interested in, and if you're interested in B1, B2, B3, evaluation for you. They'll take video, you see they will take one of your videos and they'll evaluate with their college coaches and they'll put you in a skill set. And then they'll match you with these schools. And they'll tell you, um, let me give you an example of Anna. Academically, you're right on target with the graph. Athletically, mm, it's a reach. Okay? Okay, now I know. Okay, that's a reach school. That's not going to be a match. So you move on. And it, so that's the value of that. And there are different packages. And they're very expensive, so be careful with what I'm tell you. You know. So, yeah, absolutely. So. Four grand. That's all want because the time you get to your sophomore year, you know just as much about recruiting as they can. I'm serious. The only thing that advantage is if you're going to pick one, make sure they have athletes that are working for that, that are actually volleyball athletes. Mm -hmm. right? I don't want a lacrosse player telling me how to get my daughter into school to play volleyball. Right? Yeah. You want to make sure they have that. And that's pretty easy to get that out when you talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, there's going to be ranges, right? Majority of, these, majority of these organizations are database driven organizations, right? What they do is they compile all the, I'll use this as an example, all the public information, school's address, contact, phone, admission requirements, location. You can do a Google search and type in Texas University and get all of that information. But it takes you time. You got 1,400, 1,800 schools out there, right? It's a lot of work. So there are resources. This is what we use. We use sports recruits, right? So I use, I use, I've used this for the past four years, three years, Chris, I don't know, whatever. But I use it as, like Todd said, a resource, a tool. This is not gonna get you recruited. This helps you stay organized, okay? This helps you stay organized. It helps you through the process of research, okay? So like Todd said, you could say, you know what, let's, let's start looking at schools. I, I told you guys, let's go ahead and start researching. Well, you know what, I want to stay within the Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico border, right? From there, I'm a kid that really likes small schools. I, I went to Salina and, you know, I just want a, a small school. So you can pick the size school that you want. Then you have academic selectivity. Let's say your daughter is not so well in academics, right? Just low GPA, whatever reason. She's lazy, she's not, it doesn't matter. The point is, her scores are not there. So there's gonna be some schools that she's just not gonna be able to qualify for, okay? You can select that. Some schools and within this system are most selective. You'll see schools like uh, Rice, Tulsa, those are very good, what they consider selective schools. You can say, well, show me the most selective within Division Three. There is none, all right? We can look at more selective and say, yep, yeah, Southwestern, UTD, Trinity. UTD is a very good business engineering school. They're known for that, right? So it's a very good resource that you can use, try to help you filter through all the 1800 colleges to say, yeah, you know what? I, based on my skill level, based on my grades, I think I should be within, I'm gonna focus my attention on these schools here. This system can help you filter through that process, right? So it's a really, it's a really, good, uh, really good program within that. Let me, let me mention one other thing that I've learned. <clears throat> My daughter has everything filled out except SAT, 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 okay? These coaches aren't going to get super excited about you until they see an SAT or SAT. Yep. Why? Academic pot of money, athletic pot. Mm -hmm. If you score really super high, maybe I only have to give you 10 grand a year. You can get the other 20 from academics. If you score really low, then I need to go to bat for you in the admissions office or give you a little bit more athletic. Absolutely. So that's that's gonna be the last kind of checkbox you make. Yeah. And I mean my daughter's getting ready to take it probably she's gonna take it in January or February. She needs the first one out out the door to see how she does. Yeah. But that's the junior year, right? So like I said, that sophomore year is very frustrating because there's just a lot of yeah. a lot of unknowns. Yeah. It's there's a lot, right? There's a lot to it. Um, I'll give you an example last year two years ago with Peyton Jackson, right? She, um, she was ranked seventh in her school, had a high GPA, was being recruited by division, high division two schools, right? Um, they were selectively being able to give her a little bit of money, but as you know, a lot of private schools up 
$60,000, right? Which is the majority of the schools that were recruiting her. She hadn't taken her uh, standardized test yet. She wound up scoring like a 33. That opened up doors ridiculous for her. A lot of other schools that didn't even show her interest for the two years during that recruiting process, all of a sudden they start popping up. They just start recruiting and start calling and start, right? Standardized scores are just as important as how fast and how high you can jump. So it's super important that you focus on that. Either one. They'll take the high people will give them more money for. And if you go to these college fairs, you ask, well, you look at this price tag and you ask about scholarships. And they'll, and I think Baylor has this. You can go on their website, you can go down a map and it tells you if you score this, they'll scale you. So a lot of the secret from the academic side is already taken out of the mm -hmm. out of the mix because they'll tell you if you score 32, you know if you score 32, UTD will probably pay your way to full go. ride. Yeah, full ride. yeah. So you'll know some of that going into it, but that's why that's the last box before it all kind of comes together because those coaches are having to juggle. Mm -hmm. All right, I need to spend money to get someone in the front row versus the back row. I don't want to spend much on my DS, so let's see how I can get more academically from that. Absolutely, it's yeah. It's kind of a balancing act yeah. for this. And, and just like what he's saying, so much of it is based upon budgets, too. XYZ school may have a fully funded academic, uh, or excuse me, athletic program, and then UTD may not. So they may not have as much money, even though they're same division. And you'll have that in Division One a lot. Division one volleyball, your top 25, top 30, those are revenue generating sports, right? And even then, there's maybe football, handful of basketball, and a handful of baseball sports that truly generate revenue for the university. Everything else sucks money. It takes money, it loses money, volleyball included. It's an Olympic <laughs> sport, they're called Olympic sports, right? So not every school, Penn State, is probably a fully funded school, which means that they got 12 full scholarships that they can use, all right, or opportunities to pay for 12 students at any given time. Um, University of Tulsa, Division One, may not, right? The NCAA rule says you can pay up to 12 kids, but based on their budgets and their athletic department, they may only be able to afford eight, six, three in some cases, right? So just because it's Division One and you hear, oh, this kid got a full ride, I guarantee if you really talk to the family, <laughs> It's not a full ride. There's stipulations to it. They probably got academic. They probably got merit-based. It's only good for one year. And you've got to renew it. It's, it they're, they're not four-year deals. You've got to be able to earn it year after year. You can have a full ride scholarship year one and then just coast or get beat out or get injured and they don't renew it. So it's, it is what it is. That's division one. Division two, you've got up to eight, right? You, they still can give you money. It's still division two. They can give you athletic money and academic money. A lot of the kids, just because of, we're not TAV, I'll be honest with you, we're not TAV, we're not pulling the 6'5 monster, not monster, beauties, 6'5 beauties, right? <laughs> it's recording. <laughs> Beast on the court, right? Beauties on the side. We're, we're not. So a lot of what we kind of work with is that lower division one, and in some cases, most cases, division two, which is a good mix because you're still getting a good school academically, you're still being able to accomplish the money part, which is a big part of why you're here, right? Academic and athletic. Those schools will bat for you, all right? If they truly like you, they say, you know, I could use a setter. I really like you a lot. You're an awesome attitude. I've only got so much money I can give you athletically, but you know what? You do this and I will work with you. Peyton Jackson, so back to the story of Peyton Jackson. She was offered, I think it was $14,000 over four years. That's, eh, you know, it's, oh, that's fine, whatever. She scored that 33, the school doubled it, and she qualified for merit-based. It wound up going to where she had 98% of her school taken care of. Unbelievable, all right? She was the type of kid that said, you know what, I realize where I'm at, I wanna to go to medical school and be a doctor. She's gonna have no, hardly any debt when she goes into medical school. That's awesome. So there's opportunities everywhere. It's just a matter of finding the right fit for you, researching, communicating, just like anything else. You know, you, you guys went through this process when you selected power. You have 20, 30, 40, 50 other clubs just within McKinney, right? You could have chose. You researched the coach. You got to know us. You got to know what we were about. Uh, location, colors, whatever, right? There's, it's the same process, just on a grander scale, a more serious scale. So. Tony, just to confirm, D3 is no athletic, but academic. Yeah, D3. 
NAIA is still, so NAIA is the National Associate Intercollegiate Athletics. It's a conference mainly made up of religious affiliated schools. So you still have schools out there and they still give money. They can still go up to, I believe it's 12. And I'll have to confirm that. <laughs> NAIA, NAIA can go up to eight. So NAIA, you can still find good schools, right? Don't get enamored with ESPN Top 25. Or I don't, I don't recognize that name at all. Yeah. 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 So you're gonna have those. They still are able to give you money as well. Division three, you can get money. It's not going to be labeled athletic, right? You. That's again where you get your academics, and they'll do merit based. They'll do academic, they'll do uh, grants. Grants is another big thing that they'll do as well. I know for a fact UTD does that. Um, Zach is currently posting, say, hey, look at this. If you're able to get this school, or we can practically get you in for free. Right. Right? But nothing of that is athletic. Yeah. Nothing is athletic. So yeah, absolutely. So di different divisions. Uh, another option as well is junior college. Junior, uh, you guys are probably familiar with junior college like in the baseball world, right? Um, junior college for baseball is a little bit different because sometimes those prospects go there and then go straight into the pros. It's kind of a dump ground for the kids that are not good academically, right? And they get their grades up, go, and then they straight to MLB. For volleyball, it's similar. Um, they can still offer you a little money, right? You can go there academically, come back, get your grades up, and then wind up at Oklahoma. You could wind up at Texas. It, recruit it. Junior college is more of like a, my kid needs to mature a little bit, go for two years, and then find her, so get an associate's degree, then finish her last two years at a, at a university. Um, from experience and from just research, junior college is a big integral part of the recruiting for many universities. A lot. It's just like in football, okay? As an example, I get, uh, we'll get emails near, sometimes near the end of the year, seniors, and we'll say, hey Tony, do you know any unsigned seniors? Um, you know, we had some injuries, we had some people quit. Uh, one kid decided to go to medical, medical school early, one went to nursing, whatever, and it left our roster in a tizzy. This is a division one school, and I'm like, whoa, you guys should have been done two years ago, right? Well, a lot of the seniors that are still floating around may not fit their standard. So they jump into the junior college ranks. Right. Things happen. Yeah. Absolutely. So junior college ranks, just because you're at the junior college doesn't mean you're stuck there for two years and then you're going to go to Podunk University in Alabama, <laughs> right? It's still a viable opportunity for you to get recruited. And a lot of those schools will still work for you to try, because again, it's their <coughs> reputation. As a junior college, I want to be known as, come with me, get your grades up, whatever, then I'm going to put you somewhere else. So that's an opportunity as well. I don't know if you are in that situation or not, but if your daughter's really struggling academically, that's another opportunity to look at as well, right? Get two years knocked out, get your grades up, work on your skills a little bit better, and then let's try to get to your landing point in school, wherever that's at. Yeah? So, and for those that have come from smaller schools, uh, private school or schools with maybe a thousand people in their situation, sometimes you go to a good opportunity for kids to kind of get that break between maybe university or so. Uh, you know, one of those let's say Oklahoma is like a thousand, you know, population, now I'm going to a 40,000 population, that chunk can be a lot. So sometimes JUCOs are a good uh, bridge between doing your year two years, um, get your undergrad stuff taken care of, and then have large schools take a look at you as an opportunity as well. Absolutely. So, um, Let's kind of, I'm going to walk you kind of through the beginning of the club season to where it should, things should fall, right? So again, where we're at right now, uh, you guys just signed with your teams, you're going through training, you're probably finishing up school ball, you're starting to think about the recruiting process. You're either in the full-blown, I've been doing this for a year, or I have no clue what to do, where to start, right? You both. Kind of the timeline, what, what I use as benchmarks, where we should be at this season. If you've done it, great. If you haven't done it, now's the perfect time to start. Start researching schools, right? Start wide. Think of it as fishing and dating. Throw a net out there. You may think, I don't want to go to Colorado because of hippies or whatever. Two years later, like Colorado, awesome, right? Just don't cut anything out. Throw a big wide net out there. Start wide, okay? Your daughter doesn't know what she's going to be next week. I guarantee she's not going to know what she's going to be five years down the road. 
you may have that one kid that's like, I'm gonna be a doctor, I'm gonna be a doctor, I'm gonna be a doctor, okay, cool. And then she's a doctor. Whoa, you're right. <laughs> okay? So start researching. Start practicing writing emails. Start start practicing your, your communication, right? Hey, my name is, this is my information. Keep it short, keep it simple, keep it informative. Okay? Let's get measured. One of the biggest things coaches look for, and it's gonna be in this article, is just pure athletic ability. You know, you can be a great academic student, you can be play for TAV or power or whatever, but if you're not athletic, they're not gonna spend the time on you, right? At the end of the day, recruiting, these coaches are still in business, it's their job. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to find kids that are gonna help them win now. So you may be an awesome character person, you may be an awesome like, man, her family's cool, but she can't <laughs> jump to save her life or take a quick first step. Why am I going to spend the time on you, right? So perfect your craft. That's going to be something super, super important. Okay? So a timeline. Hmm? You're talking about getting those stats like... Yeah, so the, the stats that I'm referring to are going to be more... Um, there's really three that they look at. And it's primarily for front row attackers. DS, we can still look DS at it as well. Not so much. Yeah, so the big ones that they look at are going to be... Um, your standing reach, meaning um, without tippy toes, how high can you touch? Meaning just how tall are you, right? How high can you touch? You may be 5'6", but you got a long, lanky arms. That's good, right? You may be 6'1", and barely touching here. <laughs> That's bad, <laughs> as an example. So standing reach is gonna be a big one. Uh, block jump. Block jump means how explosive are you from a standstill position, everything going vertical, how high can you jump? That's block jump. The big one that I get asked a lot is, what are they touching? The term is, what are they touching? What are they touching? It's your approach jump. Meaning if I said, take as many steps as you want, you've got three opportunities, just jump as high as you possibly can. I want to see how high you can jump. That's called an approach jump or jump, a jump touch. That's the one, unfortunately, that I get a lot of response to say, what's she touching? Oh, well, she's touching nine foot. Thanks, but no thanks. You know? So unfortunately, because there's 400,000 volleyball players, they filter you down pretty quickly. So through your communication and through your research, if you're a 5'10 outside, realize that you're a dime a dozen, right? A coach can go shake a tree and get thousands of 5'10 outside hitters. Thousands that can hit a ball really hard, hard cross. Thousands that can bump just beautifully. What separates you, right? Is it that you're jumping higher than the other kid? Can you do a specific skill, right? Just understand that you're... <laughs> Your daughter is one of a lot of kids that can do the same skill set. So you're going to have to figure things out. We're going to have to work together, kind of like really identify your daughter's strengths and hit on those and sell those. Okay? Uh, for hitters, as an example, one of the big things that stands out is the ability to hit high line. All right? It's in that article. Can you hit a high line shot? High line meaning I'm coming in for an angled attack. Thousands of kids can hit that. Thousands can hit it really, really hard. Thousands can bounce them, but how many can actually hit high down the line? That's a skill that transfers to college. That's a very hard skill, and if you can do that and you can do it well, that'll jump you. That'll separate you from the pack, right? Setters, are you able to control the ball? Are you able to get your feet set? Do you have a quick first step? Can you lead? Can you communicate? Those are a lot of skills that a lot of setters have, all right? But then you're going to have to figure out what's the... You know, can I, can I run an offense? Can I, there's a lot of things that go into. So that article that I gave you guys actually starts listing out qualitative um, properties, or I guess you can say uh, qualities of athletes that fall into those categories that have been recruited. So take a look and read that, okay? So back to the, the timeline. Um, the big tournament that we have coming up, most, I think most people are gonna be going 18s and 17s, 16s not so much but it's the Tour of Texas, right? The Tour of Texas is the opportunity for majority of the, we'll say Southwest, to take a look at your kids first, right? That's where they come in, they say, okay, uh, all the Texas schools, we're gonna look at everybody. We're gonna look at 16s, 17s, 15s, 18s. We're gonna look at them first, right? That's, that's our home kids. We're gonna go there, we're gonna look at them. So it's highly suggested that you guys email those schools first. Well, the next question I get asked is, Tony, how do I know which schools are going to go? We have access, you guys have access as well, to uh, uh, a site called University Athlete. I believe it's on the last page of your, of your outline. University Athlete 
is the database that most, if not all, college coaches use when they're at a tournament. So if you see them on their phone and they're kind of doing this and they got all those funky symbols, they're using University Athlete. That's what they use to pull your information, add them to lists, stuff like that. Now, things that y'all don't have to worry about is that we take care of the roster for that. So when we enter the tournament, Chris or myself will put a roster in, we'll upload it to University Athlete, the tournament will send that information as a database to the coaches, they buy into it, and then they have your information there. So that is, that is one site. Now with that, they have to register and let the tournament site know, hey, I'm buying your stuff, in addition, I'm gonna be there. So a couple weeks beforehand, we'll know which schools are gonna be there. Tour Texas have a list. Yeah, so what I'll do, Last year's Absolutely. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll send you, say, hey, these are the, these are the list of schools that are going to be there. These are the ones that were here last year. Know that you're going to have a lot of schools that are going to sign up the day of that may not be on the list. Right. So still email, right? Still communicate with them. <coughs> but a lot of the national qualifiers will do that. So I'll be able to send you guys a list of schools saying these are the ones that are expected to be here. Go reach out to them. So you can tailor your communication more direct to that. Hey, I see that you're gonna be at the Show Me or Disney. Uh, come stop by, my court number is 10. I'm gonna be playing number 20 and make it more personal, right? Because you, you know they're gonna be there. That's, a, that's definitely better. Yes? Okay, sorry to jump around. No, that's okay. Um, last year, we, were doing, we didn't know where we were gonna be on what court until like we were there or something. Yeah. So, absolutely. So again, it's still communication, right? I'm dating you. Hey, I'm going to be at the Tour of Texas. I'd love to see you there. Awesome. Hey, coach, it's two weeks. Uh, we've been having some pretty good practices. We're having a good time. Uh, can't wait to see you at Tour of Texas. You still haven't told them where I'm going to be or what. Hey, coach, it's a week before uh, schedules are going to come out. They know that, for one. Two, when it's the week of, you better believe you're still communicating with that coach. You're just, you're trying to stay in front of them nonstop. And I'd go so, back to the hotel the first day, email them again, and tell them where I'm going to be the second day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, it's just, you got to just keep touching. Gotcha. You yeah, just okay. got to touch them. Yeah. All right, because sometimes that information just is yeah. not there until so, that long. Absolutely. So, that's a great question. So, you stay in, hey, you know, a lot of times, too, these coaches will prefer to be texted, right? Text them. You know, the coaches will ship, not you, the girls. Okay. Text me, you know, text me. It's easier. Just communication, whatever that is. Email, phone calls, right. texting, whatever. Stay in contact. So you're at the tournament. You say, hey, coach, uh, we're a couple days Thursday. I hope to see you guys on Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. I'm number 10. We're going to be at court five. This is our schedule. You know, one, two, and four. We ref, whatever. See you then. All right? All right. You play, kids, your job, athletes, you better perform. All right? You got to perform. You got to have a good attitude. All eyes on you. Assume that every, as soon as you walk into that gym, that everybody there is to watch you. Assume that, all right? No, no, it's not. It's not an individual sport. You take care of your own as part of the team. Absolutely, absolutely. They're not just watching you play. They're watching how you react when you're on the sideline. Absolutely. You know, one of the biggest things that I heard from a coach is, and they look at this is how do you react with your parent after the game, whether you won or you lost. You won. Oh, God, leave me alone. Go get me some food. Oh. All right? You lost. Oh, you know, Bobby, I don't know what to do. There's a level of, okay, you know, they just lost, but then they're like, can she get over it, you know? The reason they look at that is because at the end of the day, if they recruit you and if you accept, you're theirs for four years. Do they want that to do it for four years, right? That's a good point. So it's, there's so much they look at, and there's, for majority of the kids, it's a first impression. You have one opportunity to show that coach what you can do, and then, I'm sorry, but they're probably going to move on. I'll answer this question as well. For last year's 17-18, if a coach is interested, or a program is interested, like the dating uh, example, they'll find you that, I mean, just how you do is you walk into Lone Star, and you're like, oh, what part are we on? You know, on a computer, you can go to ADS, you can pull up all the information. If they're, I mean, partly if they're truly interested, they'll also reach out. They sometimes they reach out directly to us. Mm -hmm. Hey, coach, what court are you on? And I'll sometimes, like, when you see us disappear, it's because we're answering four text messages of coaches that are, hey, you know, uh, we're looking for your kid out here. <laughs> I've had coaches in the past that have followed the uh, Y17 team last year. We had a player, uh, a coach follows for three matches, just 
point because we had it was one of those you know you're on this court and this court and but they were just constantly texting hey where were you at where you at where you at where you at so if they're also interested they'll help reach out to you to find out from absolutely from coaches or they may you know they can go to an ads they can go to whatever registry they have Tur texas has a, a site where you can keep track of you know live up-to-date stats as well as what courts are you guys going to do so with what what he's saying right this is all kind of like what y'all do I haven't said anything about what we do, all right? So at the tournament, our job is to coach your daughter, blah, 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 blah. When, when the tournament ends or when the match or set ends, I'm looking. I'm just like you. I'm like, who was there? Okay, cool. Uh, I know that Anna reached out to University of XYZ and she had communication and this coach actually sent an email back. You better believe that as soon as that set's over, I'm going to go try to find that coach and say, hey, what do you think, man? You know, what do you think? You know, give me some feedback. That, I try to help you guys. Chris tries to help you guys cut the fluff. So that you're not spinning your wheels, communicating 30 times, and this guy's like, <coughs> if they're doing that, I want to know so that you can know so that you're not wasting your time. So that's something that we do as well. First. Second, coaches don't prospect. Like I told you, they create lists. They're only going to create lists for kids that want to be at their program. You can be a 6'5 beauty again. And everybody in the world wants you, but that 6'5 beauty says, I don't want to go to TCU, or I don't want to go to Texas, <laughs> right? They may not want to be at your school, so why is a coach, and we're now we're talking lower Division One, Division Two. why do they want to spend the time with a, with a kid that doesn't want to be there, right? So that's another thing, why the recruiting lists are super important. So when those coaches are there looking at their phone doing this, they're looking at the 20 kids that they went to go look at. Part of what Chris and I do, and some of you parents do it as well, You'll see X, Y, Z. Hey, coach, how you doing? Oh, you're at that court. You're watching TAV. Hey, did you get a chance to see my kid? You know, she's over here. She's going to be on this court right here. Yeah, awesome, man. Good to see you. And we try to get them on your court as well. That's what we do as well. We build, we build relationships because we know that we're going to be able to reach out and say, you know what? Taylor's doing awesome. I need to get somebody over there to watch her. You know? Taylor said she's really interested in UNT. UNT just showed up. Boom. Hey, man, how are you doing? I got this kid that's really interested in your program. You know, she's a six foot middle. You know, just go take a look. Let me know what you think. They're saying, yeah, man, I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks. You know, I'll let you know. Either they're going to lie to me <laughs> or they're truly going to go and they just say, Taylor really is not what I want. Or, yeah, Taylor, you know, awesome. Give me some information. That happened last year with a couple coaches, right? ECU. One of the kids that we were, um, my outside hitter last year, Madeline Hogan. She's fine. She's a good player. She's a really good player. Division two, low division one. We're at the Tour of Texas and she's doing well. She's bombing some balls, playing well. One of the coaches that was recruiting her, Sam Houston, I believe, she had re worked and did that whole thing with Sam Houston. Well, these coaches are buddies, it's a big community. He brought running over, they're sitting there and they're just chitting, chatting, watching the game. The guy, his friend, was Division I ECU, East Carolina, now showed interest in Madeline and that took off. When this guy was there to recruit her, this guy fell in love with her and started that process. So it's, it does. It's, again, it's all relationships, all relationships. No, no, that's a, that's a. We have relationships, but there are other clubs that will tell a whole unnamed club that has recently tried to lead with the recruiting lines of, we'll get your daughter recruited because we know Jared we know Ross Rose, we know. Blah, 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 coach. I can sit here and tell you we know a lot of coaches. However, there are certain kids like, and, 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 and no offense. I was, <laughs> You're front row, girl. I got seven of you. You never believe it. I lose my credibility. Yeah. There are certain groups that we know, but we have a very good pool with a lot of the D2 schools who do call us and say, hey, what do you have coming up for your 2019 class, your 2020 class? Where are you at with your, you know, with your kids? They'll call us and we can say, hey, come on over, or they'll catch us in Tour of Texas and be like, hey, what does your class look like? Awesome, well, why don't you stop by our court and we get you some exposure. But don't go in this process thinking like, oh, Tony's the end-all be-all, Chris is the end-all be-all, or such and such a coach at another club is the end-all be-all that they attract. You know, I can pick up the phone and call 50 coaches for you. That doesn't necessarily happen. However, on the one-off, <coughs> there are occasions where we do know several coaches that will call us whatever for lost roster spots or some other kid move or they decline or injury, whatever, they'll call us. So absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's a dynamic process and the one thing I would say is that 
and I say this every year to all the parents, it can get very overwhelming. Right, you're gonna walk out here and you're be like, yeah, either you're gonna be like, screw this, you know, or yeah, let's do this. Yeah, awesome, we got two months to do it. And then all of a sudden next week you're like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> all right, I researched 500 schools and now I gotta email these schools and now I gotta do this and I'm fighting with my daughter because she's not doing it. And that happens a lot, okay? So take your time, create a family plan, all right? Chunk it up. So let's say you do have 20 schools, 30 schools that you legitimately want to reach out to. Don't do 20 in one week. <coughs> say, you know, I'm going to do five here, research some more, five this week, five this weekend, not all in one now, I'm going to do one a day. Break it up so that you're not overwhelmed, right? Absolutely. Make sure you guys communicate between each other. And this is strictly for you parents. You're not the one going through the process. Your kids are. Make sure they own it. You can help them, support them, but I hope you're not the one sending the email. I hope you're not the one writing everything out, the one that's doing everything for the kid, right? There's, there's a balance between that, all right? So help your kids on that. Also understand that they're going through AP courses. They're going through standardized tests. Right. They're going through female stuff. They're going through boys. They're going through grades. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress. We recognize that as a club which is why I'm not going to hound you and say, you didn't send emails last week, what's the deal? All right? At the end of the day, it's your future. You want to go, you want to do the work, I'll help you. I'll help you be accountable towards that. Right? I'll help you say, hey, you sent an email, this guy responded, why haven't you responded? That'll help you. But I'm not going to say, I see you've sent zero emails, what's the deal? All right? that's, not, that's not our place. Again, I'm a resource, I'm here to help you guys if you need it, but I'm not going to babysit you, he's not going to babysit you on that. Okay, so uh, so back to the Tour of Texas example, back to the year, right? You've emailed, you've let the coaches know where you're at, you've performed, you've lost, you've won. Who cares? You're on 16-3, you're on 16-2, you're on 16-1. Who cares? At the end of the day, they're there to recruit you, not Chris, not Tony, not the team, not the color, right? They're there to recruit you. So if you're not up to their standards, then obviously they're not going to show interest in you. But if they see that you're a kid that could potentially help their program, keep their job, do something well, you're clay that they can mold here, then absolutely. You know, one of the things that I believe this article talked about is that recruiters, they assess you, they don't recruit you, they assess you, evaluate you, and they try to see what you'll look like when you're 18, 19 years old. So you may be whatever now, but what do you look like two, three years, four years down the road? proper nutrition, when you get stronger, you know. So a lot of that they try to see as well. So which is what I'm saying, make sure, and this, is, this should be happening whether you're recruiting or not, make sure your kids are on point every single time. It's hard, but attitudes, characters, the how to be a good sportsman, you know, in the wins and the losses, performing at all times, that's super important, super important. So you got the coach there, you guys took notes, you won, you lost, so what? Okay. What I suggest you guys to do is now take that film. Make sure you have somebody on your team recording the game. Take the film, cut it up, get your best play, your best place. Don't worry about whether it's accurate or not. Get your best place, put it in a highlight film, two to three minutes, and now you're following up. Now it's follow up. You got your leads, follow up. Hey coach, uh, Texas State, I saw that you showed up. Thanks, I appreciate that. We happened to finish third in the tournament. Hey, by the way, here's some video of me from the MLK. Highlights of me in the MLK. Send it out. Okay? Yep. It depends. So I've seen some where I uh, use your daughter as an example. Okay. So Anna, Anna is a DS, right? If I got her just digging a ball and cut it out, that doesn't show context. Or it's like, again, shake a tree and a thousand DSs can dig a ball. But if I, if I see Anna from serve, receive, platform, boom, cover her, hit her, dig it, transition, dig it, y'all hit it in the net, oh, I shouldn't put that on because we lost the point. No, right? You're selling yourself. You're showing movement. You're showing ability to move and read, stuff like that. So it depends. It depends. So as a setter, something that I would probably highlight is your ability to set with tempo and location, meaning... Show a play that you're transitioning from serve receive, get to the position, boom, set it. Are you covering? Are you just standing still? Did you go back to defense? You're back at defense. You went for a ball that was tipped. 
Those kind of plays show your athletic ability. Those are the ones you want to highlight versus just you setting an outside, cut, backside, cut. That, that not, right? That's where I come in to help you. <laughs> Send me your videos, I'll help you. I've done them, I've, I've cut videos up. I can give you feedback on that stuff. Well, more importantly, you know what Tony did for us, I've never had this opportunity before. I sent him high school highlights. He sent me a... Take, take a look at this. Let me know what you think. Well, not only did he take a look at it, he sent it off to a D1 and D2 school and got those coaches to comment on it. Then I went back and redid the whole thing. Because now that you've got, you got it from a horse's mouth, you know... You know, what they're you know what they're looking for. Oh man, I gotta get rid of this. This doesn't work, but this works. Mm -hmm. So that right there is worth its weight in gold. Because you, now you know you've kind of got a quote unquote D1, D2 certified highlight video mm -hmm. that's out there. And if those two schools like it, then your probability is good that the other ones like it as well. Yeah, so we'll do that for everybody, all right? Um, at the end of the day, we still have to kind of keep our level over barely doing stuff and it's not skill level, I'll help you. I'm gonna help you no matter what, but I may not be sending it to my D1 friends because right. you guys probably are not at that level, as an example, right? Yeah. Um, but I will give you an honest assessment, I will help you and I'll walk you through that, and we've done that. So I'll give you, you guys create a film, and you say, Tony, go look at it. And it's eight minutes, I'm gonna say, all right, you need to cut six minutes out, <laughs> all right? And then you cut to two minutes, you're like, I think I got the best plays. And then I'm going to say, cool, first 20 minutes, I was bored. Or first 20 seconds, you didn't get my attention. So I may say, you need to move things around. In his example, it was a good video, very good video. Anna did well. But some of the coaches said, you know what, I need to see a little bit more of serve receive because she did really well. But I want to make sure that it's not just a one-time thing, right? Show more of serve receive or whatever. So that's where I can help you guys as well, kind of help you through that process of what to put in it, how to put it. You can make it your own. There's lots of software out there, free stuff that you can do, or you can send it to me, I can help you. Um, it does take time. I charge a fee for it, um, but if you wanna do it your own, by all means do that, and then I'll help you walk through that. One type of film. Leading up, going back a little bit, leading up to the tour of Texas, majority of you guys, in fact, everybody has no club film except from last year, because you haven't played a tournament. Some of you have high school film, right? Some of you don't. Some of you have high school film that's not very good. Either nobody recorded it or was recorded on a phone from 800 feet away or just whatever, right? So when you start sending these communications out, again, you're trying to pique interest. You're trying to get your kid on their list. We want to send something that's going to sell you, right? So either you put high school highlights or you put a skills video. The skills video is important. It's not the end all be all. It's an opportunity to again, show your daughter in a very controlled manner and environment how athletic they are. So I'll help with you, I'll work with you. As examples, I've worked last year with some outsides, middles, right sides, everybody. And we went through, it's an hour session and we went through some drills. I had my camera and we put it in different angles and I showed what the girls can do in a controlled environment. So for setters, we worked on static setting and then majority of it was movement. Can you show a balanced, powerful position? Can you do certain sets? Can you do certain things? I cut it up, put it out, and say, okay, here's your video. You have a YouTube link. You can do whatever you want with it. From there, what I ask is I say, okay, now you wrote a beautiful email, great introduction. Attach that to it and say, coach, here's who I am. Here's a little video about me, my skills video. Let's do it, you know? What do you think? So that's how I suggest you approach prior to MLK, to Tour of Texas, things like that. If you have high school film, put it in there. Let me see it first, <laughs> right? Let me see it first. After your first couple tournaments, you don't need to use that skills video anymore. You don't need to use that high school video anymore. Then you want your, what did you do last week? What did you do this week, All right? Same thing, still give me the highlights, still give me the clips, leave them up there because they want to see progression, All right? they want to see what you're at in November, October, December, right? or January, February, March, whatever. So that's kind of the process, and I help you guys through that. You got benchmarks, you got Tour of Texas, you got MLK, you got the Disney qualifier, you got Kansas City, uh, Lone Star. I mean, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. We're, we're blessed in that we are in a very talent-rich area. 
meaning Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, they're all within three, four hours of driving. So in some cases, you'll have a lot of coaches come to our region ranking tournaments as well. It doesn't have to be a qualifier. So, lots of talking. Anybody have questions about anything? It'd be anything right now. Just kind of opening it up for that. <coughs> Only thing that I haven't been able to get my daughter to do, she just testified, and this is the year to do it, and that is a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, she writes out all the script, yeah. and of course she tried to do them, and of course she has to leave voicemail. It is like pulling teeth. So. It's very hard. What we've walked up to is the beginning. Now you've potentially got a coach who said, hey, cool, you know what, I like you, you did well. I didn't give you, it's not saying you have an offer, it's more of, hey, thanks for inviting me out, I liked it, keep sending me film. That's the most common, keep sending me film, right? Well, to me, that's like, dude, I'm gonna jump on that and see where this guy's at. It piqued his interest, right? Immediately from that point, you should start thinking phone calls. All right, you guys know this, a phone call is worth $10,000 more than any kind of email that you can send. Right, old school, right? He prefers phone calls over any text message or phone calls are so valuable. Now here's the insight that I've gotten regarding phone calls. The onus, the responsibility of that phone call is on the coach. Meaning, your daughter is 16, 15, 17 years old. She's a young girl. She's not accustomed to talking to adults, whether it's an adult woman, female, male, whatever. She's not. They're just not. They're kids, right? You don't expect a kid to just be like on point, answering questions, and just full of all this on a phone. You don't. It's the coach's responsibility to keep that conversation going, right? Now, things that help. Coaches understand that it's not their first you know, job to be perfect people on the phone. But at the same point, they can tell when a kid is prepared and when they're not prepared. There's a difference between being shy and talking versus, hey coach, you know, it's me. How's it going? That's not, that's not prepared. Right. Versus, hey coach, you know, it's, it's me. Hey, I got a couple questions. Uh, really nervous about this, but, um, you know, maybe the worst talker in the world stutters all the time, but she's got a list of questions. Hey, what are your academic standards, you know? I saw that you guys did really well last week against XYZ Club, or how's your spring training going? All right, so difference between being shy and uncomfortable versus being prepared and prepared. Totally different thing. But understand, it's the coach's responsibility to keep that thing going, all right? It's not the kid. I probably would say the coach, eh, probably don't want, want them. They're probably just taking the call just to kind of like, <laughs> when's this thing gonna end? Right, there's telltale signs in a lot of that stuff as well. Okay? Now, to your problem that you had is, I'm calling, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm getting voicemail all the time. These guys can't, again, because NCAA rules, they can't return a voicemail. All right? So how do I get in contact with these guys? What do I do? You can text, I guess. You can text. This is where we come in, right? Or where you, where you send an email and say, hey, um, Coach XYZ, um, Hey, when's a good time to schedule a call? All right, just instead of blindly just picking up the phone and calling when they're at dinner, when's a good time? Can I schedule a call from 5.30 to 6.30? Or when are you available? Let's set some time aside and, and do it, right? Or you schedule the call, they still have something pop up. Well, they can't return your call. Hey, if you can't uh, take my call or something, to, please reach out to Tony, let him know, and then he'll get with me. I've had times where co a couple kids have reached out, coach didn't take the call, they reach out to me and say, hey, let them know that it's, I'm okay, I can take in the next 20 minutes if they can call again. Okay. We can, that's... Yeah, and that's important, sophomores, they can, they can call us. Athletes can call the coaches. But Tony's gonna have to play help behind the scene. And returning stuff, and returning, yeah. When you saw uh, September 1st of your junior year, you guys free free to go. At that point, I've kind of stepped back a little bit because now it's simply, like you and your, that coach, the kid and that coach, right? In, in years past, and I've done this thing that you've helped out, if you guys are uncomfortable taking that first call, we'll, we'll role play mock with you mm -hmm. guys. Just, hey, you know what? Like, you do mock calls. Or I've met players for coffee, okay, hey, just across the table for me, and pretend like this is a phone call. 
and you know, I play the role of coach and just kind of start asking some questions and coaches ask, just to get that comfortability level and say, well, if I talk to go to Chris or Coach Tony, I should have no problem being able to talk with right, Coach XYZ. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, that's a lot of stuff in there, but this is where Chris and I come in to try to help you through the process where you're at. You guys may be different than where he's at, or you might be different than where he's at. Or you might be a player that they say, you know what, I see Kaylin, she's an outside, but I think she'd be a dang good libero. So all of a sudden you got coaches like, whoa, you know, what do I do? You know, that's where you come to us and we'll help you through that process as well, all right? Um, certain colleges recruit at certain kind of uh, ages, right? Division one, a lot of them through the national qualifiers are focused on the young girls, believe it or not. They're looking at 15s, 16s, 14, 14s, 15s, 16s, majority of the time, all right? A lot of your Texas schools will use the Tour of Texas as the first one, and then they gotta look at nationwide, so they'll look at other age groups as well. <coughs> Division two, II, Division three, they're gonna be looking for that year most of the time. So as an example, majority of Division twos have not finalized their roster, so they're gonna be looking at seniors, juniors, majority, right? So you may be saying, Again, as an example, Maddie's like, yeah, you know what, I think I'd be a good Division II setter. Um, I'm a sophomore. I'm doing my work. I'm reaching out. I'm calling. When I'm not getting a response, whatever, coach may show some interest. It doesn't mean that they're not necessarily don't like you. It just means that they're not, you're two years behind for what they need. That's the other thing. So a lot of times they're looking at what they need at that particular moment. So that happens a lot. And that happens a lot. Um, I have one other question. Yeah. When do you know it's appropriate to ask for an unofficial visit? Okay, difference. So unofficial visit, you take them as many as you want. Official visit is a complete. So an official visit versus unofficial visit. Unofficial visit means you can go to the university or campus or whatever, request to speak to the coach anytime you want. Take those as much as you can. So through your research process, you should be taking those visits. Official visits cannot happen until your senior year, okay? Now, I would highly suggest that if through the process of you're calling and communicating and coaches showing interest, hey, coach, daughter, is it a good time? Do you think it's a good time for me to go visit the school? Can I go visit with you guys? Maybe you can show me academics a little bit. Generally, coaches will be the ones that kind of say that. Coaches are usually the ones that kind of recommend okay. coming. They're the ones that say that because again, now it filters out the kids that are just doing the process to do the process versus those that truly want to be there. Now, my two cents on this. It's an investment. You're playing club volleyball. It's not cheap. You're spending a lot of time doing this process, school, work, family, blah, blah, blah. It's not cheap. You have to visit colleges. You have to. You, it's highly suggest you do not accept an offer or go through this process and not even visit the school or meet with the coach or go look what the campus is or just don't, all right? I mean, example, Truman State. Everybody said, well, maybe most people have heard Truman State, right? Like, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that. I know some kids from other people, a family member has been there, whatever. It's three hours away from an airport. All right? You can fly into the nearest airport. It's three hours to get to the school. Those are factors that you have to think about. Right? It's a lot of different things, so please visit schools. Visit them on your weekends, visit them on spring break. If you're gonna drive to Disney, hit a couple schools along the way. Whether they're schools you're interested in or not, it still gives you the practice of like, hey, that's what a college university looks like. Dorms over here, this is over here. I don't like it because it's in Lubbock and it's all flat and dirt, or you know what? Awesome, beautiful Ozarks, Arkansas, I wanna be there. You get to learn what parts of the country you really like more than anything. All right, or it's the Aggies, man, or it's heaven, you know? <laughs> but start doing that. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take effort. You need to start researching by actually visiting the schools as well. And I would even venture to say that is regardless of whether you play volleyball or not. If your kid has any intention of just being a college kid, go visit schools, go do both. You say, you know what, volleyball may not work for me, but you know I'm still gonna go visit their engineering, athletic, li liberal arts, whatever, just go visit. It definitely helps. Yeah? Uh, talking more about Division three or NAIA. Uh-huh. I've got one that has been talking about going into military service first. After she gets done with that, is there 
any option if she's too old or she's out of volleyball too long to go into a school and start playing volleyball? Uh, um, no, because again, this is a great question, right? You're, you're not too old as long as you haven't used up your eligibility. So what I mean by that is when you do this process, and I think, help me, has Anna done the NCAA eligibility? Yes. Okay, so there's a organization, NCAA, that checks your eligibility, okay? Which means they check your scores, they check your amateur status, okay? They basically say, send me your information, and this NCAA organization says, you're good to play college athletics or you're not, okay? So an example would be, um, let's say you're, daughter or whoever your child goes to the Air Force but winds up doing like a minor league baseball in the Air Force never played college whatever she comes back and says yeah I'd like to play college volleyball or college baseball or whatever NCAA is gonna say oh I saw that you played minor league got a check for it fortunately your amateur status is up you can't play anymore all right so or you cheated you took money or something like that that's an example of an extreme example of that your family is the opposite where they went to military service haven't gone to college haven't used up any eligibility with athletics, they should be able to do that, provided that she meets all her academic standards, right? Still gets her SAT scores, all that stuff. There's been many examples of ex-army guys playing collegiate football. And you have like 25-year-olds playing with 18-year-olds. So yes, it is a possibility as well. Would they still be interested because she wouldn't be playing? She's, she's got the discipline. She's got responsibility. She's got, I'm guaranteeing that they're probably working her out. All right, she may not have the volleyball skill, but man, she's, I'm speaking for a coach, right? Yeah, there's gonna be coaches that would potentially be interested. In there's gonna be some that are like, eh. You know, she's washed out, she's too old, she's probably been injured, she's probably been worked to her back, who knows? But yeah, absolutely reach out for that. I mean, I know, you remember Mark Dodge, uh, linebacker at A&M? He was, a, he was a, uh, an Army Ranger. A linebacker for A&M is 26 years old, playing with 17, 18 year olds, you know, and he was a really good linebacker. So yes, it's com absolutely. Now football is a little different, but yeah. Yeah. So really, it's just if they've use any eligibility or not it sounds like they haven't or your daughter hasn't but my suggestion is go through the and it should be on there again on your resources the ncaa eligibility center fill that out and they'll tell you there's gonna be a lot more resources behind that regarding that that scenario anybody else good questions no okay um so last thing i wanted to get at is there's a lot of help right on the Outline that I sent you guys, the NCAA guide for Start reading a lot of that stuff. Get familiar with a lot of that stuff. Um, tons of information out there. The Clearinghouse is the one I'm referring to. Um, there's a couple websites that I would suggest you guys, if you're truly like volleyball fanatics and you just love the sport, whether it's your daughter or not, you should probably, I would recommend you guys join prepvolleyball.com. It's a fun site. It's a community of volleyball coaches, players, parents. It's tons of resources. They got articles all the time about schools, colleges, kids. The part that I really enjoy that's a college recruiting needs list. Okay, and it's updated weekly in some daily in some cases. I went there yesterday, and it was depending upon the division, it was updated as of yesterday. Um, what they do. It's a community. They'll reach out to these coaches, or these coaches will reach out to them saying, hey, prep volleyball, I'm, uh, I'll use an example, UTD. I'm UTD, this is my school, this is my color, this is all this, this is what I'm looking for for 18, 19, and 20. 2018, 2019, 2020. So they'll give you three years deep, seniors, juniors, sophomores. You use that to your advantage and say, awesome, UTD is looking for a setter. I'm a middle, darn it, <laughs> right? That kind of stuff. That will help cut down your 500 schools to quickly down to a more manageable set. And the other thing I'll mention, I use it for, is NCSA recommended it to me. You know, we had all these schools in sophomore, now we're down to junior. You go out and you can check their commits on that site. Mm -hmm. And you can project, okay, she's 
she's interested in TCU. Well, God, I look at all her commits, and TCU in 19 is going to have five DSs. Mm -hmm. There's no way she's going to. So TCU goes to the bottom of the list. So it helps you project out where their needs are going to be. If they're not on the, hey, I need this position, yeah. you can kind of see. And then you can decide at that point, okay, I still really like the school. If they're interested in me, maybe I offer to walk on, right? Depends on how bad you want to play. Or red shirts more coach's decision. But so it's, it's a very good site for that as well. Yeah. With that, there's another one called Rich Kern. It's on there as well. That one is more of a like a 1990s website, just but it's got a lot of good information. In fact, that was prior, that came before prep volleyball. So Rich Kern is a lot of your old school coaches use that, but a lot of new ones. So, and that's the same thing. It's another site that lists out everybody's needs. So it's really fun to go look at. And that one I believe you can search by region and stuff, but it's fun to look at and say, hey, Texas is, you know, if you're a Texas fan, is looking at an outside hitter. It's like, oh, that's cool. You know, who are they gonna get? Um, Division three school in Minnesota is needing this. You know, go research them. Go say, you know, that's a school I think I can go and look at. I'm potentially interested. I'm going to send them an email. You know, because they're looking for what I need. They've got the offer. They got the major that I want. They're close to an airport. They have got the colors. Whatever. Use those as as uh, as tools for that. Absolutely. The other thing I'll mention, you need to talk about old school. There are old school coaches out there. So do not be discouraged. They will not open an email. Yeah. They will not do your profile. Show up at Tour of Texas. They just want to kick the tires. They're yeah. not into this high tech stuff. Yeah. So don't get feel bad if the one that did this to Anna was SMU. Yeah, so she she's, didn't open an email, yeah. didn't do your profile, but she sent her an email and she showed up at her school to watch her play this year. She's just old school. They they don't want to see him in person. They mm -hmm. don't care about the video. You know they'll you know they'll give it to their assistant coaches to deal with. Yeah. So just don't be discouraged in your sophomore year and junior year. If you're not getting the warm and fuzzy that you think you should from a school that you have interest yeah. in. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good point that I want to bring up. When you start, communicate, communicate, communicate. Who do I communicate to? <laughs> All right? I tell you right now, the head coach is not the one that you want to deal with. What? The recruiting coordinators are usually their assistant coaches or some, in most cases, they're GAs. All right, it's usually their assistant coaches that are the ones that are beating the pavement researching, watching video, those are the ones that you want to build the relationship for. And I read that article, their job is to create a board, just like in the NFL, right? You do your fantasy draft, you got a board of the top five running backs, whatever. These guys, eventually what they're getting, or girls, are getting to five positions, five kids, and their job is to sell to their head coach why these five girls are, should be on this team. So those are the ones you want to reach out to. Those are usually your 30-somethings and younger. Those are the ones that eat up yeah, technology. The NCSA for sports groups, they'll identify that person in years. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. Um, but you can you can decide oh, yeah. whether or not you want to send it to everybody or yeah. typically any kind of response will come mm -hmm. from So typically the way it works is uh, the recruiting coordinator or assistant coach will be the ones that you're communicating with two years down the road you finally make a decision they're good then the coach comes in and verifies it it's like yeah you know what these three look good i like this one we're gonna go with that one that's really what a head coach does so uh hey lots and lots and lots of information um today was meant to be kind of just a this is the recruiting world i'm going to do another one in december and that one is going to be specifically for like okay this is what you need to do now let's really get at it Right? Have you put a video together? Let's, let me check your email. Let me check your research list. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. We're gonna, it's going to be more of a personal thing. This is more just informational. In December, we're going to really start checking in and start saying, okay, if you need help, show me what you got. Let's do it. So if you have questions between then, feel free to reach out to me. Reach out to Chris. Reach out to your fellow parents. It doesn't even have to be from our club. Reach out from other, other clubs. Other I'm sure you've played with other people as well. Right? Lots and lots of information and resources for you. At the end of the day, it's about your daughter and trying to get her, <coughs> potentially her dream, right? So, any other questions at all before we go? Anything for me, for Chris, anybody else? No? All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out. Um, you have my email, my phone number. Reach out anytime. Peace out. Have a good day. Appreciate it.